everyone, this is Rowan Shaw with Diagnostics Learning, here to make my cameraman fall asleep by talking about math. First, let's talk about system of equations. That's when you have two equations with two variables, and you want to solve for each variable. So, the way, well, one way to do this is called substitution, that's the way I'll be teaching you. Here's how to do it. What you're going to do is pick one of the two equations and solve for one of the variables. You won't be able to actually get the number, but you'll get it in terms of the other. For example, here, let's solve for x in this second equation over here, just because it's easy, you don't need to divide by anything. Just subtract 2y from both sides, so you get x equals 1 minus 2y. What we'll do now is substitute. So in this equation, 3x plus 4y equals 9, we're going to substitute that x, we're going to replace x with what x is, 1 minus 2y. So 3, replace that x with 1 minus 2y, so this is just 3x plus 4y equals 9. Now the beauty of this is, we have just one equation with just one variable. Now we can actually solve for it. See at first with just one equation with two variables, you can't really solve. Uh, so here, first distributing this out, we get 3 minus 6y plus 4y equals 9. Here we have uh, negative 6y plus 4y, that's negative 2y, and we can subtract 3 to get 9 minus 3 is 6, and finally divide both sides by negative 2 to get y is negative 3. And once we have that, we could actually plug that right back into x. x we knew was 1 minus 2y, which is negative 3. 1 minus, and then 2 times negative 3 is negative 6. 1 minus negative 6 is really 1 plus 6. Long story short, you get x is 7. Now you can actually check your answer by plugging them into either equation. Actually, they should work in both. So here, x, which is 7, plus 2y, which is negative 3, uh, which is really 7 minus 6, you get 1. That works. And here, 3x, x is 7, so that's 21, plus 4y, that's negative 12, so 21 minus 12 is 9, and oh, that's 9. So we know that this solution works. The graphical interpretation of this is this. This and this, they're both just different lines. Let's say these two red lines are these two equations, right? They're kind of like mx plus b's, so you could solve them. Now, their intersection point where these two lines intersect is the solution to the system of equations. So 7 comma negative 3 must be the point. So really, sometimes a question just gives you two lines and says, find for, solve for the intersection point. So what do you do? Step 1, panic. Step 2, just substitute using the system of equations. Two weird kind of exceptions here. One, what if these were your two system of equations? Here, if you were to try to solve for it, you'll actually notice that here, 3x plus 4y, no matter what it is, it can't both equal 9 and that same 3x plus 4y equaling 8, right? So there's actually no solution to this. If you try to solve for it, you won't really get anything. That's sort of when the two lines are parallel. Because see, when two lines are parallel, they never intersect, so you can't really find an intersection point. Finally, another weird type of exception here where you can't really find the solution to the system is when, look at this, these lines over here. The second line is really the first line times 2, right? Because if you multiply that by 2, you get 6x plus 8y equals 18. So really, these two are the exact same equation. They're the exact same line. It's like they gave you the same lines equation twice. So you can't really solve for an intersection. It's really, uh, they need to give you more information to solve for x and y. And finally, let's talk about parabolas. Now, parabolas, or quadratic uh, functions, are basically ones where you have a second degree power. They kind of look something like this. So when you're actually given a formula, you know, like, let's say, 5x squared plus 7x plus 8, then it'll kind of look something like that. Now, one common thing you're typically asked to do is to find the zeros or the roots, same thing, uh, or x-intercepts of a quadratic equation. So really, you set it equal to zero, because that's what it means. You want to set the y value equal to zero, and you got to solve for what x is. Now, the best way to do that, if you can, is to factor. Because here, you put everything on one side, set it equal to zero. To factor this, you could just do x minus 2, times x minus 1 equals 0. Now basically you know that x is either going to be 2 or 1. So when you draw it out, you know that those are your two solutions. 1 and 2 are the two horizontal intercepts. But what if you're given something like this, where you can't really factor it? 
How else would you find the zeros or the x-intercepts of this quadratic function? Well, there's this thing called the quadratic equation, which you can use to find the zeros. The quadratic equation basically says that once you hear the coefficient, by the way, in front of the x squared, we typically call a, the one in front of the x we call b, and just a constant we call c. So really, to find the x-intercepts, if you can't factor it and find them that way, you can use a formula where it's negative b plus or minus square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. So here, you know, it's a little tedious, but you could plug in, you know, a is 0.8, b is negative 4, and c is 3.1. Plug all that in, and you'll get the zeros. Typically, you have two solutions to your quadratic equation, but that's not always the case. In fact, let's see, here's a normal case. Let's say your equation is this, x squared minus 1. That's a regular parabola, shifted one unit down. So here it's going to have two solutions. So okay, there's two zeros, two x-intercepts. But here, y equals x, there's actually only one. It's sort of tangent here, so really x equals zero is the only thing that makes us zero. But what about this guy? Uh, here, this is x squared, but shifted up one unit. So this kind of looks like this if you were to graph it out. This doesn't have any uh, x-intercepts. It never actually touches the x-axis. So here, this has no solution, which kind of makes sense if you try to plug in zero and solve for it. You subtract 1 from both sides, negative 1 equals x squared. You can't take the square root of a negative number. That's imaginary, so this has no real solutions. And finally, two kind of tips about parabolas. Whether that a, meaning the coefficient in front of the x squared, whether that's positive or negative determines whether the parabola opens up or down. So if your equation starts something like, you know, 5x squared plus blah, 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 it's going to open upward. But if it's negative 3x squared plus blah, 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 it's actually going to open downwards. And finally, that vertex. How do you find the vertex? Whether it's a max or a minimum, the vertex of a parabola, the way to find it is the x value of that vertex is always this. It's negative b over 2a. So really, if you're ever confused, just do negative b over 2a, and that's the x value of the vertex. If that helped, make sure to sign up on diagnostics.com to learn some more math and learn to know.